<laughs> For 20 years, the Isle of Man TT has been missing one of its biggest names, Norton. In 2008, the company was rescued from financial disaster by businessman Stuart Garner, and he's been trying to get a racer back to the island ever since. 2012 looks like their comeback year. We've been given special access to their campaign, and my first visit to the Donington factory to see the bike was awesome. It's going to make your ears bleed. But on the track, with less than eight weeks to go to the TT, things didn't go well. Oh, hey, look, it's just died again. Now there's just one week to go, and after the awful weather kills several practice sessions, today's test on the Mallory Park track has to go well. I asked Chief Designer Skinner what had changed. We've done a lot of adjustments to the bike. Um, it's got a new electronics and throttle body package on there. It's running fantastically well now. It's good power, lots of grunt, lots of torque. It's handling well, uh, and the project's coming on a treat. Most factory teams start with one of their production bikes, but not Norton. This machine is designed from the ground up, specifically for the TT. Well, we're looking good, mate. I'm loving it. Only a week to go, though. <laughs> The man riding the new Norton is Ian Mackman. A brave move for Norton because until now he's been a privateer running his own bike and this is his first factory ride. But Macca is a TT specialist. His job today is to test the bike as severely as possible, then feed back exactly what happened each time they tweak it. How was that, Ian? Oh, yeah. yeah, we're getting there. Are you? Yeah, we're, we're, we just tried something which, in all honesty, we thought was going to make it worse, but we were all trying to prove a point, really. Um, and, uh, yeah, it has made it worse. So that's good, is it? <laughs> that's a good thing, yeah. So <laughs> we know which direction we need to go in now, anyway. You were flying down there. Yeah, it feels good. The bike does feel strong. I mean, you're really experienced at the TT. What's it like compared with short circuit racing? In fairness, it's just the actual speed of the place, to be honest. That's uh, what takes your head getting your head round a bit. You know, day like today, you probably hit 145, maybe 150 mile an hour at, at most, and you know, there you're, you're pushing on nearly 200. <laughs> Just beggars belief. <laughs> on a roads? Yeah, basically, yeah, yeah, oh. it's, uh, yeah, yeah. On a on a road that you'd go to the pub on normally, yeah. Crashing isn't an option. You know, you've just got to keep that little bit in reserve. Well, we'll see you in a week. I think You'll I might be. be making tea for you. Hey, okay. Mm. Well, mine's with one with sugar. <laughs> Back in the garage after Macca's feedback, they're tweaking the suspension to be more stable over the bumps. The man sorting it out is known as Touche. We're constantly working on suspension today. The bike with the motor sounds, he's loving the motor, so it's just getting it running and set up so that he can use what he's got underneath him, really. But just surviving the TT with its 37 mile laps is going to be a serious challenge. You work on the assumption that if it can break, it will break. And if it can go wrong, it will go wrong. Suspension adjusted, Macca's off to thrash the Norton. Then it dies again. Well, what happened here? Just, uh, just cut out. Um, yeah, everything's turned on. and just boom, gone. Uh, the power turned off. So, has it run out of petrol? There's a possibility. Yeah. My engineering brain immediately said, "Run out of petrol." Let's hope I'm right. Result then, yeah. just yeah. petrol. Now it looks like Norton will make it to the island, but will they finish the race? The first day of this year's TT, and amongst all the other teams setting out their stalls, I'm thrilled to say Norton have made it. But while the boys are setting up, in the back of the race truck, life isn't all glitz and glamour for Norton boss Stuart Garner. Here's Stuart, the boss, doing the washing up. And he lives in there. Is that where you're living? It is where I'm living. Is that the Norton Executive Suite? Yeah. Have a look at this. But you wouldn't have the CEO of Honda in here, would you? Eh? I mean, look, that's where he sleeps. You've got a very big sponge bag, mate. Thank you. 
Do you use a lot of products? Yes. I yeah, bet you do. You are excited though, aren't you, mate? Got here yesterday and just to be in the paddock and you see all the boys, all the trucks, and then there's a few lads wheeling the bikes out, or we've got three vehicles here, however many staff, one bike. And the, and the big joke was when, when, we, uh, when we were loading, don't forget the bike. So this is what the pit garage looks like from the outside, right? But behind the scenes, I'll introduce you to everybody. Come on, then. OK, so now, look, working on the bike here, everyone's got nicknames. That is actually James here, but he's called Jason for no reason. Why are you called Jason? Just because Touche calls me Jason, that's it. Yeah, all right, James. So, Touche here, top mechanic. So, these boys are fettling with the machinery under the watchful eye here of Skinner, right? Chief designer, big head honcho. Mustn't pat him too much on the back. Might get rather annoyed. Now, Simon's on the ivories here, yeah? So, basically, Touche and Jace deal with all the mechanics and the spannering, and Simon here gets on the ivories and tells them what to do. And obviously, last but not least, okay. is Ian, the writer. What goes on in there when you're about to go out on the TT on a nought? Does it make you feel special? It does make you feel a bit special, to be honest. There's not many people who can say they've ridden for a factory and a factory nought, and certainly not. In the golden years, Norton have won 19 senior TTs. But today, what are the real expectations after so long away? Initially, of course, it's to be here it's to qualify and then it's to finish the race. It's a brilliant platform to come back next year, to come back the year after and have a crack at winning the senior. To be part of the senior race, which is a week on Friday, seems miles away, doesn't it? But they have to qualify. Now, to qualify, they have to do a lap at over 113 miles an hour. Now, that qualifying lap can happen at any time during the practice sessions throughout this week. And the first one is six o'clock tonight. With only a few hours before first practice, the bike needs to go on the dyno to check that it's still as good as it was when it left the factory. If it isn't, they could lose tonight's session and a potential to qualify. With the sun beating down today, it's the perfect opportunity to secure that magic lap. But back from the dyno test, it's not good news. There's an issue with the engine's timing. Touche is going to have to strip the engine in three hours. Immediately, Norton are finding out how hard racing here can be. Coming up, Norton are running out of time in their attempt to get back into the TT. So if you want to know what it's like to be in a race team, 45 yeah, minutes ago before the first practice. Back on the Isle of Man, I'm worried that Norton aren't going to make it to practice. Well, welcome back to the TT. And there's about hmm, an hour to go before the first practice. Now, while everyone else is queuing up for scrutineering, where are Norton? Well, I'll tell you, they're still in the garage. To qualify for the senior race, Norton will need to complete a 37-mile lap of the course at an average speed of over 113 miles per hour. Tonight, the weather is perfect. Miss this one. In the coming days, rain might roll in and they might not get another chance. Well, the heat is seriously on here in the Norton garage. So much so, I'm holding the fan. Touche, there's 45 minutes, mate. You're going to be all right? Yeah, yeah, we'll be good. So basically, you've had to strip it down and now rebuild it? Yeah. To right. get the timing right? Yeah. OK. So if you want to know what it's like to be in a race team with 45 minutes to go before the first practice, have a look. If it was me, I'd be throwing my toys out of the pram with the pressure, but the boys are continuing on in a calm and collected manner, just like rider Ian. You're just constantly flatline, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, I'm my heart's going it's... like this. <laughs> yeah. Is that what it's about? Just being chilled, whatever's going on? Well, it's just who I am, to be honest. I can't help it, you know what I mean? <laughs> After only three hours to totally rebuild the engine, the beast roars again. <laughs> Well done, boys. Eh? Love it when a plan comes together. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. 
With the final bodywork attached, she looks stunning, but the pressure is seriously on to get the bike bedded in on the dyno. OK, look, right, it is still a bit stressful, and seeing as we're short-handed, we're going up to the dyno, and I'm now officially a member of the team. As the bike starts, it's time on the dyno to bed in the engine. The first practice session is nearing its end. It's touch and go whether they're going to make it at all. OK, time's really ticking, OK? So we've got about 15, 16 minutes before practice is officially over. So the Norn's going to come out of the dyno, go over there to the pit garage where they're going to change the oil, and then it's got to be scrutineered. Then Ian's got to get on it. I mean, how much more do you want to do in 10 minutes? Time is just about up, but they're still pushing on. We might just get out on track. Oil changed. It's a mad panic to scrutineering, and it's Skinner's job to start letting me down gently. Still hope to get out? No hope. A little bit late now. I don't think we'll get through uh, scrutineering now. Looks like we're down and out. I think we've missed it by about 10 minutes. Gutted. And sure enough, I'm completely devastated. The body language of the scrutineers confirms the worst. It ain't happening, man. It ain't happening. After all that today, and now they've missed it by 10 minutes. Well, look, all you can do now is follow the progress of Norton on our coverage on ITV4. <laughs> Me, all I'm going to do is pray and hope that the legend eventually returns.